The Beginning of the World, Part 2 The only other things that are still incurable are an array of mental illnesses. Mostly, people are able to cope with them. There is more knowledge than ever before about mental health and psychology publicly available to everyone. Even the average person knows how to minimize their symptoms in order to live more comfortably, but it's still not easy, even though there is a lot more support and sympathy for those who are struggling. I've started talking to a group of friends who live with an artist and a therapist. They have daily counseling sessions and describe their feelings and hallucinations to the artist so that she can paint them. Other arrangements like this exist, where people describe their nightmares or dreams to writers or artists or musicians who create so much beauty from pain and usually credit the ones who gave their thoughts as co-creators. These artists have groups that stay with them as their companions, with no specific need for jobs or to do anything in particular that they don't want to. Very few people still live alone, but not everyone is lucky enough to live with an artist or musician because there are only so many of them to go around. I started in first with a man who has reportedly been living with schizophrenia since early childhood. He recounted the tale of his parents, who had the same illness and eventually each ended their own lives. I put down my pen for a bit whilst he told me that, in his own words, I don't know what is and isn't real. I never have. I don't know when I'm dreaming or when I'm awake. I can't expect anyone to want to live like that. Why should they? Apparently, they had both lived most of their lives without schizophrenia and got diagnosed at a much later age and were unable to cope with the pain and confusion. This all happened long before the war started, while the man was still a child. I took a deep breath and asked the inevitable question. Have you ever thought about it? About ending it all? He laughed. Of course I have, but if I was going to, I would have by now. I've lived this way my entire life, and I'm still here. He went on to tell me that he doesn't truly know whether or not he was really talking to me, or whether I was a figment of his imagination. On some days he doubted whether the memories of his parents were even real. Sometimes the voices in his head tell him that everyone can hear his thoughts. He told me about the artist he lives with, and how he sees her and other people. He sat with his head in his hands as he told me that he can't see faces. Even though all other details are clear and sharp, everything looks not quite right. He used to be able to see everything clearly, but the disease kept getting worse over the years. It's not my eyes that don't work, it's my mind, he said. And for a moment, when I looked up from my writing pad, I could see him in the way that he described what people looked like to him. I saw him sitting there with a red face and green skin, pointed feet, and brightly colored hair. On my way out the door, I saw the artist that he had described. She extended a hand to introduce herself, and I briefly saw her shoes when I looked down. They were bright red. Her entire outfit was loud neon patterns with splotches of paint here and there. He told me that she had big blue hair that looked like wings, dark gray skin and a halo on her head. She was pale, with brown pigtails and a tiara. Her face and eyes were clear to me. I had expected to see everyone in a day, but after talking to that man for almost an hour, I felt the need to take a break and process everything. I resolved to write his tale first, and then come back to the others. This was going to take longer than I thought. Back home, I couldn't help but wonder whether everything looked different to him. Furniture, art, plants, photos, sculptures. Whether his experience of music was the same as my own, or if he heard something different. For just one night, I went to sleep, not fully knowing what was dream and what wasn't. I wondered what defines reality. And, after a single night of confusion and uncertainty, I thanked God that the entirety of my life my nights were not spent feeling like that. I know that there are more people like them. I won't have time to write all of their stories, but I resolved to ask a friend of mine to open a gallery dedicated to art revolving around a specific type of mental illness. She's been wanting to start one, though she hoped for it to be something different and meaningful. Now, 
onto the next target, a man with an array of mental health problems that, according to the therapist, there aren't really specific words for. I'm curious about what stories he has to tell. Thank you for listening and watching. Stay tuned for the next one.